Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I was I just got the reading Psalms 33. And the one sentence that says, Blessed is a man that standeth not in the way of the ungodly. What hit me when I got ready to do this next one was an image God gave me of a person standing right on the edge of the curb on a heavily rainy day and the rain is just pouring it's 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 a torrential rain and the streets are dirty right and the cars traffic is getting thick so the water in the street is dirty that's something you wouldn't want to drink from but a person who has any kind of sense knows you stand closer to the buildings and further away from the curb. Why? Because when the cars come by, whatever puddles, whatever uh, water is running down that gutter is going to splash all up on you, dirt, water, and all. Anytime you are in the way of the ungodly, you are going to get your righteous garments soiled. You can't live on both sides of the fence. You can't speak out of both sides of your mouth. You cannot serve two masters. You just can't. Now, one of the things I've seen that's really sad since I was a child back in the 50s is how phony a lot of church people are, including church leaders. It's sad to say. I remember a man stood in church on TV and confessed that for years he had been preaching the gospel and pastoring churches and he was a saint at church and he went home he was a hellion he was always beating up on his wife he had anger issues interesting huh or you hear of pastors who are preaching and pastoring and they have these beautiful churches and next thing you know all this little scuttlebutt is going around about them having sex with little boys or you have other pastors little cutie pies that are laying with this saint laying with that saint and 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 having babies in the congregation and everybody's hush hush because he's such a good preacher we'll just deal with that but he's a good preacher we don't want to lose him you've already lost the anointing so what are you losing okay there are times when we put up with too much nonsense and we really expect god to turn a blind eye he's not turning a blind eye he knows all he sees all and if you read Isaiah 1, chapter 1, you'll see how much he hates it all. He says, to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? Then he goes further down and he says, who hath required this of you to tread my courts? You know, then he goes on later on to say, wash you, make you clean. Come now, let us reason together. I mean... When you know how much God hates sin, the only way, now this is going to be insulting to some of you, the only way some of you can walk around cussing like a sailor, praising God and cussing your neighbor out, praising God and cussing every time you get mad, praising God, joking and cussing, Praising God, going to church, reading the Bible, coming home, reading porno magazines. Getting on the internet. Jerking it off while you're watching naked bodies. 
the things that we allow in our lives are really sickening. And we don't realize what a stench our worship is to God when our lives are so stained and dirt, dirty and, and contaminated with sin. Sins that we have grown accustomed to. I've grown accustomed to your face. No, God ain't accustomed to it. You get comfortable. You're comfortable going in the back in the in the back in the corner in the dark, feeling on your girlfriend's boobs. Get getting yourself all worked up and getting her hot and bothered. So y'all just you just get to the point where you make all kind of excuses on your way to the bedroom. And oh well. We'll get it together tomorrow. Tomorrow comes. Hey, got the can help us. Bring it over here, baby. Oh well. We'll get it together the next day. And you spend years planning on getting it together. And you really think that while you're serving in your church and you're standing and singing the songs of Zion, that God is impressed. That God has turned a blind eye because you still have your job, you still have your health, everything's going well with you, so he must understand. No. Don't even try it. <laughs> it is not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And if you are not willing to repent, that means a 180 degree turn. That means you're over here one minute. It's a sign language. You're over here one minute. You go 180 degrees. Now don't say you're going 360 degrees. Because that means you're going all the way back to where you were originally. From sin back to sin. You have to go 180 degrees. And stop there. Now, my question to you is, do you really believe in God? Do you really believe in the righteousness of God and the standards, the ways, the, the, the statutes? Do you really believe that he rewards righteousness and punishes sin? Do you really believe that? Because if you're living like you don't, might as well just say you really don't believe it. At least be honest about something. God can work with you somewhere if you're honest in one place. Be honest there and start from there and work your way up. Don't lie about everything. God ain't lying. And he already talked about how liars and all of that will will find their way in the lake of fire. So if you're lying while you're lying in that bed, and you're lying while you're beating your wife, and you're lying while you're cheating, stealing, and gambling, and you're lying while you're playing games with your job, and you're lying while you're stepping over the people that really should get the credit so you could get the position, and you're treacherous, you're scornful. Well, guess what? You got your place. But it ain't going to be with the Lord. Because he'll look at you on judgment day. And he will say. Hey, depart from me that work in iniquity. I never knew you. 